Welcome to the eLaborate Topics Podcast, where we focus on lab-specific strategies for medical laboratory professionals. We're proud to be the healthcare detectives that work behind the scenes to get the results needed to influence medical decisions. Let's grow together and jump right into the lab. Welcome to Elaborate Topics Podcast. I'm your host, Lona Small. Elaborate Topics Podcast is a weekly podcast where myself and my co-host, Tywana Wilson and Stephanie Whitehead, come to you to bring you tips, tools, and guests to help you to excel both inside and outside the lab. And today, we have an amazing guest, Patty Etchleman. Welcome, Patty. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. So Patty will be talking to us about applying tools to prevent burnout. And I know that that this is such a timely topic and it's been really timely over the past two years. But before Patty go into telling us and um, we get to learn a little bit more about Patty, let me give you a brief background, her a, a brief bio on Patty. So Patty Etchleman is a highly engaged leader, always looking for opportunities for personal and professional growth. Having worked in clinical laboratory setting for over 37 years, The last 27 in leadership, Patty loves collaborating with others on best outcomes. In her role as president of CLMA, she experienced the privilege of influencing the growth and success of a robust international organization and enjoyed the opportunity traveling the US, meeting medical laboratory professionals to learn firsthand the needs of what makes them feel successful in their lives and career. And Patty has also served in leadership roles on the ACP Board of Certification, Board of Governors. So as a certified professional coach and energy leadership master practitioner, Patty is committed to helping these professionals reach their full potential. Thank you so much, Patty, for being here. Oh, I'm really excited to share some of my insights and and really feel confident that it's going to be helpful and, and, you know, always reaching out to see what I can do so that people can be more successful. Awesome. Awesome. And I love that. And I love that whole thing about collaborating to help medical lab professionals. So we always start with you telling us a little bit about yourself. I know I read your bio. I don't know if there's any little tidbits you'd want to tell us about yourself and your journey in the medical lab field. Well, you know, I just uh, really love this profession. As I said, you know, in the bio, it's it's actually going on 38 years now. (laughs) But my favorite part has been the last, uh, you know, 27 in leadership. And uh, the reason why I became a professional coach and got certified is because I felt like that was the last tool that was missing in my toolbox. One of the most important things for me, of course, as a leader and um, as a human being, essentially, is just making sure that I have the appropriate communication skills, um, that I can uh, have the knowledge base to um, coach individuals and steer them in the right directions and be able to provide whatever resources that I have, as I said, to really help them become more successful when whatever path that they're on or wherever they're starting on their journey. Awesome. I think we, we, we can connect right there. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I actually stumbled on coaching, you know, sometimes we have that desire to help and I had the desire to help. I at first thought that the way I was going to help was through training. But the more I talked to people, I realized that coaching was important because people are really trying to figure out their potentials to be able to reach their highest goals. And so I think you have a very noble job there. 
and it shows how that you are really caring. And so thanks for doing that for medical lab professionals. And I think the fav my favorite part of it is actually, you know, coaching leaders. Uh, you know, quite often we get put uh, what I call baptized by fire, you know, maybe maybe somebody else resigned or retired and and uh, you're the person that just always worked the hardest and and well, yeah, I guess I'll step into a leadership role, but it doesn't it just because you're a really strong, um, you know, medical laboratory scientist does not always then correlate to being, you know, having those leadership skills that can really, um, you know, help you build a cohesive team, um, you know, create successes for the team and really meet the needs of administration. So that's what I've taken on, not only as those that are beginning in their career that often want to be in leadership yesterday, <laughs> mm -hmm. but those individuals that find themselves perhaps, you know, just kind of struggling a little bit because um, it is a different skill set and a lot of it has to do with building that confidence. And so, um, you know, being able to share and, and coach those people through um, some really phenomenal uh, positive change has been very exciting for me. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very, very needed. Um, and that's kind of where I started out, too, because that's where the one of the biggest need is. And the leaders are the influencers. They are the ones that create the culture. So um, even though, um, you know, that we're looking to have the team to get to their full potential, the leader has so much influence. And if we can start with the leaders, I think you're going to go a long way. And, um, you know, so many of us, because we're, we have all these technical skills, but um, we want to lead, but we weren't given the skills. So thanks so much, Patty for helping in that way. So Patty, I know you're helping, you're coaching, you're mentoring. Mm -hmm. So did you have a mentor for yourself? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I think the greatest recipe for success is to tap into all of your resources. And if you can identify a mentor and that mentor is, is excited about helping you, then you know that is really a very impactful key. My first mentor was actually my Aunt Pauline. <laughs> so, so that happened very earlier on in my life before my profession, professional career. Um, just, you know, building that level of confidence and, and being, a, you know, a strong woman and, and uh, understanding where I wanted to go with my life. And then that translated into, uh, you know, once I did start my career, uh, picking out those individuals that really encouraged me and then asking them for more encouragement. I think it's it's important to not only, um, you know, get as much information as you can on your own, but asking those people that are such strong influencers, hey, would you be a mentor for me? Um, and that takes it to that whole other level because then you can set up you know, um, visits or, you know, text messaging or can can we talk about this event? I've got a project coming up and I'll have to say probably the most impactful uh, mentor for me was Ann Pontius, who at the time was uh, president of CLMA, Clinical Laboratory Management Association. And she really, um, you know, made some, went out of her way to, to create some opportunities for me. Um, and from there, you know, I've, I've just really, um, I don't know, it, it was definitely a very impactful part of my life and, and encouraged me down a path that I'm just absolutely in love with. That's, that's great. That's great. So through those experiences with um, mentorship, being mentored, um, what would you say to our audience? What, what would you say are the importance of mentorship? Well, the importance is that you don't know what you don't know. And, and so, um, you know, I in my life has looked towards strong leaders um, and wanted to know how they got successful and, um, you know, reach out to those individuals. And of course, you know, you always develop some kind of relationship to start with, whether it's a colleague that you work with, a family member, um, somebody in one of your professional associations, um, and then it is the ask, you know, I really value, um, you know, what you've done with your career. Is that something that we can work together? So it takes a little bit of courage. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do want to think that we're, you know, can do all this on our own. And, uh, but that's, you really do have to reach out. And then I will say as a, you know, mentor myself, when I'm asked, it, it's so exciting. Um, it's fun for me because I get to work with that individual and it's just, it's fantastic to watch them grow, um, you know, to, to get them excited and, and, and see their successes that, you know, maybe I'm just a small part of it, uh, but it's very, very rewarding as the mentor. So don't forget that. And so get that courage to ask. And it really is a, um, you know, a, a plus on both sides. Win-win. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Because um, you get a lot of satisfaction given and receiving. So it's a give and take where you're both getting satisfaction out of it. And I think I love the idea where you say the mentor reach out because, mm -hmm. you know, they are ready. You know, they're the ones that's going to indicate that they are ready um, mm -hmm. versus you approaching them. Um, you know, so, you know, there are different schools of thought, but I like that, that idea when the mentor is ready, then the, the teacher will appear. So they'll reach out. So that, that's, that's interesting. So now we, I know you're not only a mentor, but you're a professional coach. Yeah. So tell us, you did some training in yeah. coaching. Right. Um, so tell us about that. Um, yes, I uh, researched for um, uh, an organization where I felt like I was going to get um, a significant amount of training. I did know that I wanted to earn a certification at the end of it. Um, and so that would be, you know, an international certification where um, and you're also supposed to, you're required to have so many hours of coaching before you can even sit for your verbal and written exam. Um, and I uh, chose a company called IPEC, which is International Professional um, um, Excellence in Coaching. I almost struggled there. Um, and it, it was fabulous for me. They, they have training sites all over the nation, all over the world. Um, at the time, I was living in Nebraska, and um, my training site was actually in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So um, they have blocks of weekends. I went there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for, you know, full days training and then practices in the evenings. And um, it went on for over a year. And then, um, you know, felt like I was prepared to sit for my international um, certification. And of course, you uh, learn all kinds of tools. And, and I still am on their website getting information and went ahead and did the extra um, certification as a, uh, you know, my master as a uh, energy leadership practitioner. And so that, again, is something that I use in my coaching to, um, you know, help uh, individuals understand where their levels of energy are. There are seven distinct levels and then how they can get from one level to the other because they're all natural. There's nothing good or bad. But there's times when all of us at some point run at a lower level of energy. And how do we bring that up so we can be strong, positive influences for other people? And then, of course, that impacts our success, too, um, the more we stay positive and, and really, um, you know, showing that energy out is the energy you get back. So that positive, strong uh, giving and, um, you know, uh, um, uh, energy for others. So it's awesome. really been a great adventure. Awesome. You know, it's so, to me, um, non-traditional for medical lab, the scientists, um, the scientists are usually about the hard facts, you know, and, the, you know, it's funny that now, especially since the pandemic, people are realizing the importance of, you know, taking care of yourself, importance of coaching the importance of energy before people saw that as woo woo. And now there's so much scientific backing behind this to prove that we're made up of energy and matter and all of that, you know, it's just like an ad, the atom and, you know, all the energy around it that we, you know, so people are now getting to understand the importance of, um, emotional intelligence and the importance of soft skills in leadership. And so thank you so much for, you know, going out and getting trained 
to help the medical lab community in this sense. And I think more people need to know about it no more so you know it's like i'm happy that i have you on the show <laughs> so that more people will know that you know what you do and so thank you so much because we need that we need that very much mm -hmm. and um so now that we know that you're a coach and you have your master um what is it master energy coach um yeah. i got that mixed up um energy leadership masters and in energy leadership yep masters in energy leadership so maybe you could share with us some tools that um, medical lab professionals i know in this time there's so much going on and there's a lot of talk about burnout mm -hmm. but there's not it's it, we can't have enough and i think especially coming from someone who is a medical lab professional I know there's a lot of burnout in healthcare. There's a lot of burnout in the lab, but coming from you, you have the tools that can help us or specifically in the lab. Could you share with us some tools that we can use to combat burnout in these stressful times? Absolutely. And, you know, I, I can't say that I'm an expert on this. <laughs> You know, I myself um, struggle day to day, um, and and that's probably the first comment is, you know, y y circumstances are such that sometimes we all just, you know, find ourselves in those lower level of lower levels of energy. And l level one is that victim. You know, why me? Why me? And and you know, we were all hit with COVID pretty hard, and um, a lot of things changed that continue to keep that almost that victim energy going, you know, we were, um, you know, the, we were demanded to come up with all the laboratory testing and we couldn't keep up with that. Um, you know, we had to start relying on uh, emergency use authorization. And those of us that are hardline scientists, if it's not FDA approved, how do we know what we're reporting? And quite frankly, you know, some of those earlier tests were a little strange. <laughs> But eventually, you know, the, the science got caught up with the pandemic and, and we started feeling much more comfortable about the testing that we were doing. However, it was just extremely overwhelming. Um, and I know myself, uh, you know, the hours that uh, I put in in 2020. And quite frankly, I thought 2021 was worse. Um, the fact that, you know, I was very relieved that our patients um, had a, uh, a much better or less uh, mortality rate. It seemed like, uh, um, you know, the second uh, versions or third versions of the COVID virus were not as, um, you know, didn't have the highest acuity levels, but we were constantly more and more testing, which was a great thing. Um, and, and then came the national shortages of even plastics. We couldn't get chemistry reagents because there were no plastics to put the, the reagents in to be able to supply, you know, for our, any of our other analyzers. Um, so all of this and then staffing shortages, um, you know, the latest data that we do have from ASCP, they do their wage and vacancy survey, and that was in 2020. 85% of laboratory professionals at that time were reporting burnout. And it was, you know, the short staffing. It was not, you know, being able to meet our patient needs. Uh, you know, if, if I run out of COVID reagent, now I had to send it out. It was taking a week to get back. Does that really help anyone? Um, and so all of those frustrations. The things that I can help with individuals when you talk specifically about burnout and how that makes you feel is really, um, even though, you know, you're working a 12 hour day or, you know, heaven forbid, sometimes longer than that, I've had to actually schedule relax time. Um, so, you know, I, I work off of an organizational tool that, um, you know, part of my Outlook calendar and I will actually schedule um, deep breathing. And so I don't know if you've ever heard square breathing before, Mm -hmm. uh, but that's where you can take your finger anywhere you're at. Um, I do it at my desk quite often. And you, so you start in the bottom left hand corner and you take that deep breath as your finger moves all the way to the top of the box. 
you pause for a little bit and then you exhale as you go across. And then now you inhale again as you're going down and then you exhale as you go across. You're, you're marking this box on the top of your desk. Um, and the thing to, to think about with that is that as you're inhaling and you pause, then you try to exhale one more beat more than what you inhaled. So count one, two, three, and hold that for a couple beats and then exhale one, two, three, four. So you're getting all of that out. And um, I'm a very visual person. So I also enjoy, you know, thinking of all that negativity, like I'm breathing in light and then I'm exhaling, you know, uh, black cloudy smoke or something like that. And, you know, breathing in peace and love and exhaling stress and frustration. So I'll even say those words. And um, deep breathing has been, you know, a tremendous game changer. It sounds like, oh, God, you know, you're just breathing. Uh, but that's a big one. Um, also, um, I incorporate, um, before I go to lunch, I walk around the hospital. So I'll do outdoors where I've got a fresh air and, you know, that just amazingly walking fast, um, you know, getting your heart rate up a little bit um, and then, you know, then sitting down with a nice lunch. Of course, I'm usually at my desk working at lunch. I won't lie about that. <laughs> but um, making sure that you're taking that time that actually builds resiliency. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the buzz phrase these days is becoming more resilient. Um, I think that, you know, sometimes we need help before we can build that resiliency. And, and you know, it's while it, it's interesting to hear the data, it, it does say here that 33 percent of um, healthcare professionals sought mental health care in 2021 which is up from 19% the, the previous year. So that's good news to me. People are reaching out when they need help. And, and that's so important too. Um, I know um, I had friends that, you know, when COVID first started and they're working so hard at work, they're just running home and, you know, pretty much not socializing. They're exhausted. And I get that too. But the more you stay in contact with the people you love, the more that, you allow people that love you to help you, reaching out, doing social activities, you know, as much as you possibly can, and creating, a, you know, a happier environment where you work. Um, I, I, um, I'm a firm believer that the more you can laugh at work, uh, mm -hmm. we have very serious jobs, but that doesn't mean we have to take ourselves seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a phrase, angels can fly because they take themselves lightly. Um, and I've, I'm a firm believer in that. So, you know, if, if um, you know, we joke around or we put memes up on the wall or, um, you know, uh, do whatever we can to um, just keep the environment light, uh, I bring in lunch. I do want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to eat during the day. Um, I am also, um, you know, very, very structured on the schedule so that um, whenever I can, if I mean, I have never denied uh, time off for anyone. Um, and that sometimes means that I roll up my sleeves and I go out and I look at, you know, peripheral smears or I put, you know, samples on the chemistry analyzer. That's just fine. Mm -hmm. because you know, there are days that, you know, I need to have off and, um, you know, it's so important to have that rest and relaxation. Um, I think people are drawn to healthcare because it's, it's what is called that level four energy. Level four is where you just want to help. Um, you have a heart as big as the ocean and you're taking on more and more responsibilities. You care for people. You want to make an impact. Um, but sometimes that can really put way too much on your plate. And you have to remember that you're not a superhuman. Um, uh, people uh, that are listening to this podcast do not see my office, but I've got a great big picture of Batman coming out of the wall in my office. And it says, always be yourself unless you can be Batman. And then if you can, be Batman. Um, so we have to have those times when we're just Bruce Wayne. Now, I wish I had the money, but we have to have times where we're, you know, our worker bees and, um, and that time to relax and, and uh, rejuvenate. 
Um, and, you know, I'm a firm believer in naps. Um, you are what you eat, eat healthy, um, get as much exercise as you can. And um, again, reach out and, and uh, uh, work in an environment that feeds your soul. And if you're in uh, a work environment that has, um, you know, turned into something that doesn't uh, meet your needs, th there's a lot of jobs out there. And I do know that I myself have worked for organizations that sometimes just want more, more, more. Um, you know, find a supervisor, become that supervisor or move to another department or, or laboratory where you can be valued for yourself as that person, not just how much work that you can produce. Um, so, you know, those are just some of my tips, always remembering that uh, burnout is real. Um, uh, if you start having physical symptoms, uh, make sure you're reaching out to your healthcare provider. Uh, you know, headaches, uh, any kind of pain in your body is your body telling you that something's not right. Um, so do you need to get a little bit more rest? Maybe you do need to change your diet. Um, you know, I, I recently discovered I have high blood pressure. I've never had high blood pressure, but it's genetics. And um, yeah, I'm a little older than I used to be. So, <laughs> so those are all those things. But again, I have been able to control most of it just by my diet and meditating. Meditating is a great way to uh, channel your energy into something that is just really very positively focused. I do a lot of guided imagery um, in my meditation um, and um, I have found it very helpful to reduce um, you know, my pulse, my, my blood pressure, and then just, I do it every morning before I come to work um, and I feel like I'm coming in with a clean slate. Um, and then I do um, practice my coaching throughout the day with my team, encouraging them, building their self-esteem. I think um, a lot of struggles that professionals have is when they feel like they're not doing well or they feel like they can't accomplish something. And so really providing them with resources, encouragement, support, and teaching them deep breathing or meditation um, it, it's, it's wonderful for me that when people reach out and ask for help, um, because that means that they probably needed help like weeks ago. <laughs> and it's just sometimes hard to ask. <laughs> awesome. I love those tools. I love it. Um, and um, I love what you're saying about creating that environment in the workplace. We already already stressed. So laugh sometimes, you know, sometimes we're so stressed, we can't initiate that. So if there are leadership that can come up with maybe a, a little break, a fun day, I know for my organization that they're very big, they actually have a fun committee. That's how important it is. And that yeah. fun committee plan different things. Every time there's a, a holiday or you know, something they're doing, they're decorating or they're having a quick lunch. And if it, even if it means us coming through, join a raffle, you, you have a short time during break, get a ticket, grab the food, and then they'll announce a prize or something, or maybe some days like dress up, you know, it's like dress up day and then somebody win. Just anything to distract you from the routine busyness and you know so i love that you know laughing and you know trying to create that environment and you know let's not forget that next week is you know medical laboratory professionals week but you can have that kind of fun all day and you know all year long you know i um, um i posted up a big uh, wall mural with colored pencils and they're coloring you, you know just some of those distractions where, you know, you can get away from work, even though your lunch is right there, but 10 minutes just to color in a flower or, um, you know, bringing in cookies. Uh, you know, if it's a super busy day, I like to pay attention if people are not getting their lunches. I'm perfectly fine with calling the cafeteria and having a tray of sandwiches brought in. Um, you know, it's those things that as a leader paying attention and then even as a member of the team, uh, just like you said, silly little things. We, we handed out little Easter eggs with surprises in the middle. And, 
um, you know, stockings at Christmas time and uh, just little tidbits here and there. And it's just, it creates a, a, a less heavy, a lighter work environment. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. You know, there are just so many little things that we can do. And I love that. Um, remember, they did the locker contest. Of course, you don't have to, you could just buy something and tape it up on your locker or if you're good at create, you know, it's just something to distract. So I, I love that. Mm -hmm. And the breathing probably will take a few minutes. So for you to take that time to teach people how to breathe, I think during the pandemic, we were, we kind of created a quiet space so that people could just sit, you know, during their lunch, if they want to take five minutes and sit, people who want to maybe meditate or listen to quiet music, but things like those, yeah, so important. My last um, uh, position that I held, um, I actually worked with spiritual care and twice a week we had a mindfulness meditation. Um, mm -hmm. And it really was intended for those frontline workers, but anybody, we had family members that were really stressed, just 20 minutes in a guided meditation. Um, as well as, um, you know, this year, um, we or collaborated with a um, church nearby that had therapy dogs. And yeah. I can't even describe to you how amazing that was to have these gorgeous golden retrievers come through. And mm -hmm. the first thing they do is put their paws up on their lap and they go in for a hug. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. something about animals and dogs yeah. and you know, because they're completely outside of the element of the healthcare setting. Right. It was delightful and it was comforting. And um, I mean, I, I cried all afternoon. It was just so fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we take, you know, it's so important to take care of us. You know, recently for the past week, I've been putting posts on LinkedIn and it says, choose you. Because yeah. you know, we get so busy with trying to do all the things that are expected of us. But the most important thing is choose you. Yes, that is great. I love that. Wow, Patty, I could go on and on. You know you're talking my language, right? <laughs> so yes, we could, we could go, go on and on. <laughs> on and on. And um I know that this podcast is going to be really beneficial for our lab community, but there's so much more. Um, I know that they can, you know, I just want to ask you, how could they either follow you, learn more from you? I know you probably have a website, you're on social media. How can they come to learn more from you, Patty? Well, you, you, um, you mentioned my name, Patty Eshleman. Um, I do have a website, thelableadercoach.com. So all in one word, thelableadercoach.com. Um, so that's my website. I also have an email, patty at thelableadercoach.com. So you can reach out to me there. I love hearing from people. Um, and then when you get to my website, you know, you can contact me. There's all kinds of information on there that's absolutely free that I hope you find value in. Um, I, um, you know, consistently change videos. So I have several videos on, you know, how to have a challenging conversation, how to do a budget, how to uh, return on investment, just some leadership tips. Um, and then if you have any further ideas of things that you want to know about, just reach out. Um, as well as, you know, I, I can come to your site, I do presentations, I can do half day team cohesiveness building, um, all kinds of stuff. So it's all there on the website and, um, you know, happy to help where you can think I could provide value. I also have an evening class. So if you are a new leader and want to sign up, it's one week, um, I'm sorry, one night per week for three months, so it's 12 sessions. Um, what's fun about it is you learn a skill on one night, like crucial conversations, and then uh, your homework is to have one. <laughs> and then when we come back the following week, we go through and then I coach, you know, how well did it go? Did you think about doing this? And it really is, it's, um, you know, a, a student limitation of three. So it's very direct, a personal, hands-on coaching, skill building, um, and uh, that has been pretty popular as well. 
Wow, awesome, awesome. So I hope the listener, I'm going to put all this, so please share this with me so I can put that in the show notes so that um, if the listeners missed it while you were talking, you know, they'll have the links and have the website. So thank you so much, Patty, for all the work you're doing. You're finding time to balance, you know, being in leadership and you know, still giving back. So thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's a labor of love. You know, there's no other way that I want to live. Awesome. So thank you, Patty. And thank you. Awesome listeners for tuning in to another episode of elaborate topics podcast. Thank and, you. um, so Elaborate, you can always listen to this and other episode on directimpactbroadcasting.com and also would love to feature you. So share your favorite takeaway from today's episode. We have a link once you get onto directimpactbroadcasting.com where you can go in and do a video review. So share your favorite takeaway and listen to this and other episode on your favorite um, podcast platform and don't forget to subscribe to the show if you you know you're on the go with your phone or tablet subscribe to the show and you won't miss any episode so leave a comment um on direct impact broadcasting.com and join our elaborate topics group on linkedin so also if you want to be a guest on the show you'll find a guest interest form so until you hear from us again every Tuesday, please tune in next week for another amazing episode of Elaborate Topics podcast. Have a great one. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Elaborate Topics where your hosts discussed relevant strategies for laboratory professionals. Please subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and listen to us on directimpactbroadcasting.com. Stay tuned for another episode with information you can use to excel in your laboratory career.